going on YouTube? It's your boy K Briz back with another video. We back in this thing. So this video is going to be my predictions of the NBA playoffs first round and who's going to win the postseason awards because I love the NBA. The NBA is my favorite, favorite sport. <sighs> I'm a Lakers fan, so we didn't make the playoffs this year. We have improved a lot, but we haven't made the playoffs this year. So we go ahead and exit out with that. I just want y'all to know it's my favorite team. <laughs> so in the first round, we have the Toronto Raptors, who are the number one seed this year in the Eastern Conference. And we have the Washington Wizards, who are the number eight seed. So in this matchup, I have Toronto winning 4-2. to two. I just think Toronto is just a better team. That backcourt is definitely a lot more experienced than Washington's on, even though Washington has been in the postseason for a long time with John Wall and Bradley Beal. They just can't get over the hump to make the Eastern Conference Finals. Like I said, DeMar DeRozan, I think, is going to shine in this series. All the players on these two teams, DeMar DeRozan is the best. He can defend. He can shoot. He, he's just tough. So that's all I can say. Kyle Lowry, Kyle Lowry is a beast too. But John Wall is a better point guard than him. But Kyle Lowry does give you buckets. It's just that when he gets up against the Cavaliers, he's just, you know, non existent so but yeah that matchup I got I easily got Toronto four to two in that series the next series I got is the Rockets surprising Rockets who are the number one seed in the West versus the number eight seed the Minnesota Timberwolves this series going to be very good because you have the likes of James Harden who in my opinion is the MVP and you have Chris Paul and you just have the Rockets who have just been playing out of their mind this whole season James Harden, like, literally is the MVP. Versus you have Cat, Carl Anthony Towns, you have Jimmy Butler, you have Andrew Wiggins, you have Ty Gibson. You have a lot of players on both of these teams. But I think Houston Rockets are going to win 4-1. to one. James Harden is just too much. And the Rockets offense score. When I say they score, they're, like, anywhere from 110 to, like, 140 on a good night. That offense ran by Mike D'Antoni is just, like, it's just like excellent. So the only thing is if they can make enough three-point shots and defend. Mike D'Antoni's teams are historically known for not defending at all. So, But I just think they're just too tough. And Minnesota Timberwolves is just going to be playoff experience because I think they're going to be one of the two best teams three to five years down the road. So I got the Rockets winning that series. Four to one. Four to one. I got the winning that series. Next uh, is the number two seed in the Eastern Conference, which will be... Boston Celtics versus the number seven seed, which is the Milwaukee Bucks. This series, ah, man, this series would have been totally different if Kyrie Irving was healthy. But since he's out, I have an upset. Upset, Milwaukee's going to upset Boston 4-2 because Giannis Antetokounmpo, said it right, whew, that name's hard to pronounce, is just going to dominate this series. I think if Kyrie Irving was there, it would be totally different because Kyrie Irving is the go-to man, the one to give him buckets, the one that makes the team go, and he's the heart and soul of that team. So you already done lost Gordon Hayward for the year. Now you done lost Kyrie Irving, and I just think that I just think that without him, Milwaukee is just going to dominate. That's much I can say about that series. Even though Boston plays tough, and they still got stars like Jason Tatum, you have. Jalen Brown, you have a team as a whole, but that loss for Kyrie, I think they're not going to cover from it. In the next series we have, we have Golden State versus San Antonio Spurs. This is going to be a good series, but Golden State's too strong. Even without Steph Curry, they're going to win 4-1 to because they still have Kevin Durant, they still have Klay Thompson, they still have Draymond Green, and they still have a, an electric bench and. I know they was bored this whole season, but when it comes to playoff time, Golden State turns it on. They're going to be shooting a lot of threes. They defend very well. Like, they're the best def defensive and offensive team efficiently in the NBA. And without Kawhi Leonard, Tony Parker, uh, Golden State is just going to dominate them. They're younger and faster. So, San Antonio, they finna got the first round. That's all I got to say about that series. The 3 6 matchup. In the East Conference is Philadelphia versus the Miami Heat. This series here, Philadelphia is going to win four to two. Just depends on the Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid is the X factor in this series going up against a side wide side. Wide side can 
defend, block, do things very well. But Joel Embiid is the best big man in the league for centers. Like, it's not even close. The man can shoot, defend, pass, block shots, shoot threes. What can't this man do? And Ben Simmons, Ben Simmons, it's a walking triple-double. Hey, he can't shoot a lick, but he can, he can get to the hole. He can defend you. And he just get everybody involved. He's like an unselfish player. I mean, he's a 16 point guard, so he better dominate. <laughs> and then you have JJ Reddit, you had GJ McConnell, you got Covington shooting threes. This team is for real. This team is very for real. And they're going to beat Miami 42. The next series, which is a 3 6 matchup in the West, is going to be the Portland Trailblazers versus the Pelicans. Now, this one right here. It's going to be an interesting series, too. I got Portland winning 4-3 to three because Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum are just going to be too tough for the Pelicans. Like, there's no answer for Anthony Davis, who's been playing at an MVP season, finally, when he's healthy. I just think that Portland is just too tough for him. It's going to go seven games because Anthony Davis is going to have some historical numbers. But at the end of the day, it takes a team to win a championship or even win the first round. And I just think that Portland is just tougher the fourth the fourth seed and the fifth seed in the eastern conference is going to be the cavaliers versus the pacers now this series is not going to be close at all lebron turns it up in the postseason no matter what anybody says about lebron james and i'm not like a huge lebron james fan the man balls in the postseason and i just feel sorry for the pacers which they had a great season everybody thought they was not going to make the playoffs but victor oladipo came out and became a star, and they're the number fifth seed. But Cavaliers, sweet, 4-0, not even close. It's not even close, in my opinion. So now we have the fourth seed and the fifth seed in the Western Conference, which is the Thunder versus the Jazz. This is the best series of the whole NBA playoffs right now in the first round, first round-wise. Because this one, you have Paul George, you have Russell Westbrook, and you have Carmelo Anthony finally returning back in the postseason after four or five years versus the young and up and coming jazz. You have Donovan Mitchell, you have Rudy Gobert, you have Ricky Rubio. This series right here is going to be a back and forth series. I have the Utah Jazz losing to the Thunder in seven games. This is gonna go all the way this is gonna go all the way to seven games. This this series here is just gonna be a knock em out drag em out series. Russell Westbrook is gonna average a triple double Paul George is going to show up, and if Carmelo Anthony, who was the X factor for me, can get you bucket still as a catch-and-shoot shooter, I think they're going to go farther than most people expect. Because everybody's giving the label of Russell Westbrook as a selfish player. He takes bad shots. Yeah, he, he does. That's my favorite player in the NBA. He does take bad shots, but when that you can't question that kid's motor. But yeah, it's going to be a seven-game series, and I got the Thunder winning. I say by three points in game seven. Paul George hit a game winning game series three. That's what I think about that series. So those are all my predictions. So let me know what y'all think about those. Now, the second half of this video is going to be the postseason awards. Now, these are going to be very controversial because you can argue for a lot of these awards. Well, Rookie of the Year MVP. Those are two ones I think is going to be more, the most controversial. So for Rookie of the Year, my personal opinion is it should be co-rookies of the year with Ben Simmons and Donovan Mitchell winning. Because I don't even know who Donovan Mitchell was. That guy is a beast. And Utah Jazz, after they lost score to Hayward, I didn't think they was going to make the playoffs. But they're at the number five seed. And Donovan Mitchell plays a big part. He defends he can shoot he can dunk that kid is just electric and you cannot argue with what donovan mitchell has done as a rookie for rookie of the year but you can't discontinue ben simmons because ben simmons philly was a live of stock last year because they had a whole bunch of hurt players joe mb showed great flashes but then he ended up not playing the next 51 games ben simmons didn't play all season either but they're the number three seed right now and Ben Simmons averages, his triple-double average has been ridiculous this year. That man is unselfish. He's tall. He can defend. He does it all for that team. He's their point guard. He's like Magic Johnson. <laughs> He's like a younger version of Magic Johnson. 
So it's controversy because he sat a whole year out. That's why I'm just like, Ben Simmons win it. Yes, the NBA should change the rule because he sat a whole year and then he can dominate the league. But he's really technically a second year player. But yeah, so co rookies of the year. Donovan Mitchell for the Utah Jazz and Ben Simmons for Philadelphia 76ers. The next, the next award I'm going to talk about is going to be most improved player of the year. It's not even close. Victor Oladipo. Victor Oladipo was a laughing stock because he couldn't cut in Orlando. And with the Thunder, he couldn't play with Russell Westbrook. But he got his own team, and that man has had career year numbers. And the Pacers are the fifth seed. I didn't even expect him to make it. To the playoffs, not let alone make the to the fifth seed. So that one's a landslide. Vito Depo should easily win that. Defensive player of the year, Rudy Gobert. He was gonna win it last year before he got hurt. And Draymond Green, oh, let me take that back. Draymond Green won it last year and he's a beast. But Rudy Gobert has taken it to another level. And Utah, again, it's the fifth seed. So I gotta give them I gotta give it to him. That man is a hell of a rim protector. He does it all on defense. This is going to be six man of the year. Give my to my man Lou Williams. He come off the bench and get buckets. <laughs> after after they lost Blake Griffin and Chris Paul, this man still was dropping buckets on the bench and starting. And the Clippers almost made the playoffs. Losing those two players, they still almost made the playoffs. So that's easily his. Eric Gordon's second, but it's easily his. Next one is going to be coach of the year, Brad Stevens. You need not say more. Boston was no one seat last year, but you lose Gordon Hayward in the first game with that grueling injury. Sheesh. And then you have Kyrie Irving, and then you have some new pieces on the team, and Boston was the number one seed for about three-fourths of the year, and then Kyrie Irving goes down. But Brad Stevens, one hell of a coach. I think he's the best coach in the NBA after Greg Popovich and Steve Kerr, of course. So that one there. And the MVP. This one right here is controversial because you're going to have the best player in the game, LeBron James versus James Harden, who is electric. He makes that the Rockets go. Nobody expect them to be the number one seed. I damn sure didn't expect them to be the number one seed in the NBA. So I'm going to say James Harden. James Harden makes that team go. They're the number one seed. Chris Paul went down, and they didn't miss a beat. James Harden does it all for his teams. He he passes, he shoots, he rebounds, he gets everybody involved. He's very unselfish. Capella is, like, almost made the all-star game. That tells you a lot about how James Harden does well for the team. So team wins, how he affects the team, in clutch situations. James Harden does it all for the for the Rockets. I'm not saying LeBron James don't. It's just that LeBron James have historical numbers, but the Cavs are the fourth seed, and his personnel has changed from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. But like I said, James Harden, as a whole, definitely in a tougher conference too because the Eastern Conference is a joke. So those are my picks for the NBA first round and the postseason awards. So tell me what you think. Leave a comment, like, subscribe if you're new. Share the video. This is just my thoughts and predictions. So I'm Kay Briz. Thanks for watching.